Hey guys, oh, turn on a light here. And uh, welcome back to another video on the channel here. And uh, today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, what are the best heaters, in my own opinion, to use in your camper. Whether you're full time RVing, oh, excuse me, while you're boondocking, um, just heading up to the lake for a weekend, casual trip, traveling, see the sights, whatever. Uh, we're going to look at some of the best. Uh, heaters in my opinion and the best equipment to go with the heaters to uh, to suit your own personal needs so let's get in let's flip this camera around so to start things off we're gonna look at this thermometer it is reading 20 degrees inside my RV right now and that's actually because I've had a few heaters running and I'll put a screenshot of the actual current outside temperature but if I can get this thing to focus Tap the screen and go out of focus. Focus. Okay, had my autofocus locked. <laughs> so we got a few heaters there. So we got a uh, just your old basic space heater right here. Now this guy, low or off, low and high, with the temperature dial from minimum to maximum. Everyone's seen them. This is the basic. This is a Honeywell. I believe this thing's a thousand watt low, fifteen hundred watt high. And then moving over to something a little different. This is a forced air, so which means it has a fan in the back. And I believe this one is a ceramic pad in the front. One of the best, in my opinion. Moving on, we have this guy here. Now uh, you might be able to see inside here there are ceramic pads as well. This one you can see there's a digital gauge readout here. This one reads in Celsius because I'm Canadian and I'm better. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Anyways, it reads in Celsius. I don't think I can change it to Fahrenheit. So anybody who wants to do the conversion, go ahead and do that on you um, but this one's a forced air as well so it's got a fan in the back it's got a ceramic heat pad in here the difference is this has a temperature dial on it uh, moving over to this guy this is a presto di uh, heat dish this is a parabolic heater this is basically a radiant heater with electric wound coils there that'll glow red illuminate off the back here and radiate the heat outward this is more of an, a direct heat. This will be something you use to heat you or what object you want heated up to heat up. So there's that. And then we got these guys. Now this is a Mr. Buddy, uh, Big Buddy. You may have seen it in my last uh, walk around video of this. Now we're gonna get a little bit more in depth with this heater as well. So to start things off, we're gonna plug this guy in. I'm gonna grab my cord here. Yeah. Plug it in. And that's it. Now all you gotta do is choose low. Orange light comes on. Fan is blowing. You can hear the fan maybe if I turn the fridge off. Uh, where's my fridge? Nope, because it shuts that off too. Yeah. Oh well. Fan's blowing. You can go to high, next heat setting, change your temperature. Uh, you might be able to see my light bulb flicker. That's the temperature dial working on it. Now I've never found these temperature dials to be accurate. And for that, we're going to get into that a little later. So I'm going to unplug this guy. Get him out of the way for now. Next step up from just your basic ceramic heater is this guy we're gonna plug them in another thing to note the Honeywell has a ground plug on it this one does not I prefer ones that are grounded especially for heaters especially in a camper environment oh I should also note that that Honeywell it does have a tip over safety so you don't have to worry about that plug this guy in and as you can see it's reading current inside air temperature to go aside with 
this guy reading 20 this is obviously saying 19 now we can choose our modes off high low ah al and off so what the ah and the al means is automatic high automatic low oh, it's down here so what it does is essentially right now this is high i cannot control the temperature. It's just going to crank out heat at 1500 watts. Turn it to low. Now it's going to crank out heat at 1000 watts. I can't change the temperature. Go to automatic high. And here we go. I can change the temperature. And you might be able to see the, the light dimming off of this thing here. So when it reaches the temperature, it cuts the fan, or it cuts the temperature off, and the fan will continue to go for about another minute or two, and then shut off. Another thing about this is hit another button. And you can see it's oscillating. That's a great thing in here. Well, there we go. It's moving moving some air around oscillating around now these heaters are great um, kind of we'll get into it in a minute with this one I think this one's a little defective and I'll show you why in a bit so we're gonna shut this guy off when it comes back straight around turn oscillate off turn the heater off we're gonna unplug it but again it's not GFI or Sorry, it's not grounded. Not a big fan of ungrounded circuits being inside of my camper where the potential of it getting wet is there. I got a dog, his water dish is on the floor. Yeah, not a, not a good combination waiting to happen. Next up is this guy. Now, like I said, this is a direct heat. Uh, it's not meant to heat up the entire rig. It's just gonna heat you up wherever you put it in a house in a cabinet in your camper it's going to heat you up now this would be a great option for i got the couch set up we're kind of chilly but it's you know maybe only 18 in the camper and we're just not needing a whole mass a whole lot of air cranked out while we're chilling out in here in the evening i can put the heater on the floor these beds are obviously going to be pulled up and it'll just directly heat us while we watch a movie it's very quiet so you don't have to hear the fan blowing or anything when you're trying to relax on the couch and watch a TV show or something. Mind you, none of these heaters are really actually loud, but you get the point. So, I'm going to plug this guy in. Now one thing, right off the bat, this has a light in the base. I put a red light in here. Uh, me and my wife did use this in our bedroom a little bit and in our living room to try it out. And the red light was kind of nice just to kind of light your little footpath up so you don't trip over anything. So over here is your off, low, medium, high. Again, this also has a tip over safety. Here's your thermostat sensor right up in there. Uh, this also has a tip over safety. Every time I've knocked it over, it seemed to work. So I'm going to turn this guy on. Um, the difference between this tip over safety and the Honeywell, you tip these guys over, they just shut off, you tip this one over, and it makes a loud noise. So we're going to turn this on. I don't know how well it's actually going to turn on, mainly because I'm running off of a 10 gauge 100 foot extension cord to my house, which unfortunately is also an ungrounded circuit. Don't shoot me. So yeah, it's really not going to light up. So we'll uh, get this guy plugged in to something else a little bit later. Get my dog bone out of the way. Get this out of the way. And last, and in my opinion, what every traveler needs is a good propane heater. For those who have traveled in the campers, who have the furnaces, they know the propane furnace burns a heck of a lot of propane 
It also kills your 12 volt battery if you're boondocking. That's where these guys are handy. Now, like I said, mine is the Mr. Buddy Big Buddy. So it's got a, uh, I think what is it, 18,000 BTUs is high. So that's both ceramic discs. 9,000 BTUs of heating on medium and 4,500 BTUs of heat on low. Uh, the way these things operate, the little propane tank can go into the side here, along with a one pound propane tank can go into the side here, or there is room for a 20 pound tank hook up there, which you'll be able to see in my last video that I did of this RV, was a tour walk around, showed you it being hooked up to the 20 pound tank. Right now the 20 pound tank is outside on my barbecue, and I don't feel like dragging it over with the hose. But the hose is under here, tucked away. So, we're gonna light this guy up. Uh, before we do, actually, I'll show you something else. Uh, these things are built in with a fan. Flip the switch. That'll turn the fan on on the propane heater. If you've got, I think it takes four D cell batteries in the back. Depending if you need the battery or need the fan or not, you can do that. Or you can get a uh, AC to DC adapter going from a plug-in down to its, I think it needs, what, 5 volts for the fan to run. Or if you're really, really handy, you could rig up a USB cell phone charger to work off of it. I'm not saying to do that. Don't take my advice on that. Just saying, if you know what you're doing, you might be able to. So I got a propane tank in there. I'm going to crank this guy on, so to do that, you turn it halfway to pilot, let the propane flow through the pilot tube, and then spark it. Hold it for about 5-6 seconds, you can let go, the pilot light stays lit, then you can crank it right up onto high. You see both burners just lit up, and they're going to take about a minute to get glowing red hot, but already this thing is cranking out the heat like I can feel it big time sitting in here right now as you can see this is starting to glow a little bit more now most of the heat is actually rising up somebody outside the rig oh no people are just shooting off some fireworks out there yeah, those kids Anyways, now you can see this thing's glowing cherry. And all that heat, it's, it's coming up all here. Now this is all just kind of wasted heat up here. This is why that fan comes in handy. But a way around what I've found is I've got a tabletop fan here. Turn it on. Turn it on high. Go to oscillate. And this is a quiet fan. Like I'm not going to hear this in the night. And this is going to oscillate back and forth. And it's going to take that heat that's being trapped all up in this corner here. And it's going to start blowing it around the whole rig. <coughs> the only thing is these things do use a fair bit of propane as well. In the sense of I think you only get 4 hours or maybe 6 hours on high off of 2 pounds of propane. So, you know, take it as it is. I probably won't need to use it on high all the time. In fact, I'm dying of heat. Let's crank this or turn this down to medium. Now I got 4,000 4, BTUs. Now on high here, this on high is enough to heat up, I believe online it's 240 square feet or maybe 480 square feet on high. I want to say it's the 400 square feet on high. Um, I'll put some stats in this corner of its heating capabilities. All I know is on uh, on high it's too much, medium's okay, low, this is probably what I would leave it on if, if it was just me, my wife, or a mild summer day, I'd probably leave it on, on medium there. And it's just, oh, that is cranking out heat still. I don't know if you can see that here. It's, Try and focus that. So 
But this thermometer is now reading about 26 degrees in here. And I believe it with this little heater. Like this thing cranks out the heat like crazy. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't feel like dying of heat in my rig here. So there's all that. Now we're going to get into the next step of how much power these truly actually consume and what possible accessories would be handy to have at these units. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after a quick little commercial break. I got to go charge my phone. So see you in a bit. All right, and we're back. So, I'm gonna get on to the test of this. I just kinda wanted to pack up the bed here a little. So, still got this fan blowing, and it's doing a heck of a nice job blowing some, some air around. Um, if you guys got a Costco around, I recommend getting these, uh, these little fans. They're just a little personal desktop fan. They are dead silent. In fact, I think the only thing you're gonna hear is the refrigerator running behind me. So, that's a good investment in my opinion. Alright. Well, let's get, uh, let's get on with our test again. So, I said I wanted to show you how much watts each one of these actually truly draws. And if there's any parasitic wattage on them. So, I'm going to move this heater out of the way. This is the Honeywell. We'll get to it in a minute. First thing we are going to test is going to be this uh, Presto. Let's get another light turned on. So, a little dark under there. Checking a little bit more light in there somehow. No, no, okay. Well, under there, I got a 3000 watt modified sine wave power inverter. Or pure, pure sine maybe? I don't know, whatever your cheap ones are, I really don't care. Only I don't run any high electronics with it, so it's mainly to run the fridge and other crap while we're traveling. So let's plug this guy in. Okay, turn it towards us. Now it's off. I'm gonna turn on the power inverter. Now it's gonna show me my current voltage, how many watts I'm drawing. So right now I have 13 volts on my bank pulling zero watts. Little tiny light bulb, maybe it's a one watt, doesn't register. So I'm gonna turn this on low, drops down to 12 volts and pulling 1,000 watts. Uh, 1,100 actually. Uh, so about 1,000 watts of sink pulls on low. Now this voltage or voltage, sorry, uh, wattage will not change no matter what heat setting I turn this to. So low, 1000 watts, crank it all the way up on high, still 1000 watts. So this thing will only draw 1000 watts of power all day long. As long as it's turned on, she's pulling 1000 watts. Once the temperature sensor kicks in, it'll shut down. and then my voltage will come back up on the bank. So, 1000 watt heater all day long. Not a bad if uh, you're using it just by you. I kind of wish it would be, you know, low of like 500, 750, and then 1000, or 500, 1000, and 1,500 uh, 1, on high. That would be nice, but hey, okay, is what it is. All right, so that's out of there. Next up, my ceramic oscillating heater. Let's uh, sit down on the floor. I'm gonna plug this guy in, and this thing should be off. All right, it's reading 21 degrees in here, and it is off. And as you can see, she's pulling 280, 210 watts. It's off. It's off right now. 400 watts, 410, 430. 
So this is why I think this heater is defective. In fact, I know it is. I can feel Yeah, I can feel some heat radiating off of that thing. So this guy is defective. So I'm going to throw it out. But, and overall, if this one wasn't defective, I'm going to find the brand of this guy. What is it? Bionair. Bionair. Maybe I'll put a screen cap of this guy. Yeah, so as you can see it is still off and it's pulling now 230 watts and I seriously do feel heat coming off this thing, a lot of it actually. So turn it on, now, that's, now it's on high, oh yeah that thing's instantly hot. So I don't know if this thing's designed to keep the coil maybe somewhat warm so when it turns on it blasts out heat or not. But uh, yeah, she's blasting out heat at 1300 watts on high. Go to low. And it's about 1000 watts to 1100 watts. And still putting out a fair bit of heat. Let's crank the temperature down. 13 degrees is what it's set for. Now it's on automatic. Still pulling 800 watts. Now it's off. And it just went into thermal overload. So, alright, so maybe mine just happens to be junk. Oh, actually. Yeah. Alright, well, I guess that one just crapped the bed. So maybe if it worked right, it'd be a worthwhile investment. This guy, though, is going straight to my garbage can. Uh, now one thing to note, from the day I bought this thing, the very first day I plugged it in, I felt some residual heat coming out of there, very minor. And everywhere I read online about these ones, they always had a tiny little bit of heat, heat coming out of them. Now I think that was, I think that's a... a a feature where it keeps the coil just a little bit warm on automatic so when it drops down temperature it kicks on and it can crank out the heat right away but this guy garbage now we're gonna get into my favorite and my trusted Honeywell this is a kind of more of a construction model heater these do heat up really well. I'm gonna plug this into the power inverter and turn her on. Now, orange light indicates that it's got no power running to it, verified by the switch being off. Go to low. Now, on low, thermostat hasn't kicked in, zero watts being drawn. So, when this is off, it's off like it should be. Crank the heater on, she's now on full temperature, highest heat, our temperature setting, lowest heat output. Pulling, should run up to about a thousand watts. All right, so 960 watts. And it moves air really good. Now what I usually do with this heater, when I use this in my camper, it's usually plugged into this outlet, 
and it sits in the bathroom and it takes the coldest air which is going to be in the bathroom here the RV and it's going to blow it all eventually towards us now what I don't like about these is there see tip over safety just activated what I don't like about these is these temperature settings you can never get the right temperature with what you want now you don't want to just bypass this because then it'll just never shut off which is also probably not good for these heaters but what I like to do is I'll leave it cranked up on high and high now this is going to get the most heat out of this system on high here is 1500 watts to verify turn this down or turn this over get the air blowing out and 1500 watts she moves a lot of air. Like that is a lot of air blowing on me. These Honeywells have always been my favorite heaters. I have two of them. I keep one in the basement uh, just for supplementary heat in the house depending on what room we're in as well. And as a backup heater, if this one ever goes, man, I'm throwing another one in this camper. I love these things. Uh, I'll put a link to them or an annotation or something in here, maybe a screen cap of a Walmart picture. I know you can get these at Walmart, uh, Canadian Tire, that kind of stuff. And these things are nice now to coincide with this what I like to run is a thermostatic plug-in so we're gonna unplug the power inverter and have her shut down and I'm gonna pull out my thermostatic plug or extension cord now this is a 10 gauge wire uh, I think Oh no, sorry, not 10 gauge. Hmm, won't focus. But it does say on there that looks to be 14 gauge. And what I do with these is I'm going to plug this into an outlet. Whether it's the one just directly under the TV or this outlet, if it's directly under the TV, then I can run the cord kind of along down the wall and along the floor here and I can run the cord from the bathroom they can kind of co-injunct in here but for testing I'm going to throw this on there I'm going to turn the temperature where is it reading it's reading right around 20 degrees as well so this guy's pretty accurate as well and usually is and then Gonna take our space heater. Now this is a, uh, is it, five to twenty amp? Yeah, this is rated from five amp, twenty amp outlet. That's why it's shaped oddly. And gonna plug this in one-handed. Easier said than done. Plugged in, nice tight fit. Turn on the power inverter. Crank up the heat and the thermostat. I leave this guy cranked up on high. And then, this I'll take and I'm gonna mount a little box, I'm thinking probably right there. What I'm thinking are right along the side. It's kind of where I think I'm gonna put it. But as I turn this temperature up, you're going to see the orange light on the space heater come on and the power inverter will kick up as well. Let's try and focus you. I don't know why it won't focus. There we go. Everything's kicked on. 1500 watts. She's blowing heat. Now, I'm just going to literally place this in front of the space heater. It's going to heat up really quick, and it's going to shut down on its own. And when it does that, when this shuts off, it's going to cut the power to that, 
and then you'll see that drop down to uh, zero watts. There we go. Thermostat rose in temperature and it cut out. If I crank this up again, turn it back on. Now the reason my inverter is going off with the chiming is it's got a low voltage protection. Kicks on at 11 volts. Right now I'm at 11 and a half. It just kind of spiked. Um, like I said, the inverter is more so for when I'm driving I can power up the fridge the little freezer, the cooler, um, we've got a crock pot going at the time for dinner so we have supper ready when we hit the lake, we have that, um, maybe the TV going or to charge a laptop for the kids to watch a movie on while we travel, but mostly to keep the fridge cold because she doesn't run off 12 volt or 110 volt because it's, well, it's really, literally just an old style mini fridge. So, anyways, yeah, as soon as this comes up, right now she's maxed out at 27 degrees. So if I turn the temperature down, there you go, she just shut down. There we go. So, now this thermo or thermostat's reading is 27 in here because I'm right in front of it, but. There's that. I'm going to shut this down and unplug this. And I've got one more thing I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to quickly pack up all this stuff, throw that in the trash can. And then uh, we'll come back with the last item that I have to show you that I think everybody needs in their RV. Especially if you're going in, in early years, uh, travel, camping or traveling. It draws very little power and they're very wonderful at night. So we'll come back after another quick commercial break. All right, so the last item I want to show you here is a Sunbeam Micro Plush Heated Electric Blanket. Now this is our uh, queen size. Uh, I just literally opened this one uh, out of the package while we were at commercial. <clears throat> Mainly because I have another one of these identical, exact same model inside my house. I see this even has its film on it still. And me and my wife use this a blanket all winter long and it kept us really really warm uh, supposedly these things draw very very little bit of power um, something like a hundred and sixty watts per side I think so if you get if you, you know you're single you're by yourself um, you could get either the single twin or double and it's only one electric heating element and it'll only draw the 180 watts. I got a queen size because, well, me and my wife, actually I think this one's the king model. Yeah, this is king size. Uh, king and queen size offered dual heating elements. And we're going to plug this into the RV. And then we're going to plug it into the blanket. Might have to put you down for a second here. Just because it's a fair bit of a tight fit. There we go. Alright, so I got it plugged in. Got my heater controls here. Now these will also auto shut off after 10 hours. So we're going to turn on the power inverter. And these are off. You see them just kind of flash a little F1. I don't know what F1 means. Let's unplug you. Plug it back in. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't register off that. Hmm. 
okay so it doesn't register off the power inverter unfortunately so it's not going to change anything but there's one blanket or one side from low to high it also has a preheat option so you can preheat and it'll turn the blanket up on high for about 10 minutes and then automatically go to whatever you have it for a setting and these are absolutely wonderful blankets to have I just wish I could get it to work off the inverter maybe it's because I need the more expensive power inverter yeah I might need the more expensive power inverter to get that to run or maybe it needs to sense a signal first let's try plugging in my already known broken heater get a load going nope well that's very unfortunate I want to show you it's true actual water reading but I don't have one of those things to plug into an outlet to tell me the wattage but uh, on here don't know if it'll focus there we go as you can see it's 120 volts AC at 60 Hertz 180 watts per side that's what it states it is but I kind of really wish I could have read it off of this machine anyways that's uh, that's all I have for heating in the RV maybe when you get a little bit more in the summertime I'll show you what I do for cooling but like I said I've got that uh, Honeywell heater and the electric thermostat and then this guy so I can keep the you know keep it at 18 or 15 or whatever if it gets really cold at night I can throw this over top stay a little bit uh, a little bit warm like directly warm and then just have the space heater to take the edge off in the in the night if I get into you know below freezing temperatures I know I've got this guy to keep me warm I got three one pound tanks uh, over in here I got another one pound there and like I said I have the 20 pound and the hose that I can hook up to this too and I've actually been contemplating because I have an 80 pound on board tank about tapping into the low pressure line creating a T off of my stove here because it's already regulated then and this direct connects directly in bypassing this regulator with quick connect coupler I think I might tap into my stove line so I'm not dragging my 20 pound tank with me everywhere but no big deal I do have a little hole cut in the very bottom with a covered flap that I can just run the hose down and just kind of drape it out through here which is why this is kind of a last last resort if it's really cold I'll hook the 20 pounder if not I'll just get a, a quick blast of heat just to quickly warm it up with the one pound tank so yeah that's uh that's that so Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more, if we can get that to autofocus, some light on me. Hmm. Anyways, uh, I'll be shooting some videos while I'm up at the lake as well. Uh, not this coming weekend, but the next one, May 24th, Thursday, I'm heading off the lake for a few days. And uh, we'll shoot some videos over there. So if you guys enjoyed it, stay tuned. And we'll see you later.